First of all, let's just pray. Well, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word that brings life. And Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would minister to each and every one of us today. That we, we would leave this place with a different perspective. And Father, that we would yield and submit to your word and who you are. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. So today we're going to start talking about a topic that has been on my mind for quite a while and it will probably take a week or two to get through. So today we're just going to um, start with the power of words. The power of words. So the power of words, one of the most powerful forces on earth is produced by one of the smallest members of our body. It can be the most edifying, encouraging and uplifting force, but can also be the most cruel, vicious and destroying force that we all have the, abil the ability to control. Every single one of us has felt the ramifications of this, whether it's been positive, or negative from a small member called the tongue. It has the power to change the world and it has since the beginning in the account of creation until today and will continue to do so in the future. The tongue is used to communicate with people. It is used to speak words, to convey thoughts. This is how we primarily communicate with each other, whether in a good way or in a bad way. We see the power of it all the way from the beginning when God said, let there be light. Words, sounds and speech are at the very foundations of who we are as people. So we need to lay a foundation of understanding some words first so we can better understand what our Bibles are teaching us. To do that, we need to understand what some key words mean. So please understand that when I'm speaking that I'm sitting out there with you. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not act, uh, accusing anyone of anything. I'm speaking to me as much as anyone else. And believe me, Yahweh spoke to me when I was putting this together. This teaching would have to be up there as one of the most important concepts to understand and have an awareness of in our own lives. The power of the tongue or the word, power of words can be the most powerful force on earth. All of the greatest wars on earth started with words. And I know all of us have both positive and negative memory memories of the power of words. They can be incredibly hurtful and painful, but they can also be incredibly empowering and uplifting. For us as believers, we need to understand the incredible power there is in words and what we say. One of the biggest lies we were taught as kids, or well, I was anyway, but one of the biggest lies we were taught as kids growing up besides Santa and the Easter Bunny was that sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. But the truth of the matter is, is that bones heal and words can wound for a lifetime. I mean, I know that when I was younger, I had some problems physically growing up, and as all of us would know and testify that the playground is an extremely cruel place for, uh, for words. And those words can still carry on till today.
I believe that this is a timely message, especially in the world we live in today. Words that are spoken to us or by us can unify, can heal, can bring life to another soul. But also they say that the words that we speak, they can also divide and cause bitterness. They can cause heartache and bring death. Bring death, you may think that's a bit over the top. But the times I've heard over the last four or five years of young people and adults who have taken their own lives because of words spoken over social media is absolutely horrific. To think that a person can do that because of the relentless negative words posted to them is enough and is enough to cause them so much distress anxiety and pain that pushes them to the brink that shows you how powerful words are you know we often hear of, of young people that get totally infatuated with social media and, and the things that are posted about them in a cruel mean way and it drives them to the unthinkable we live in a society where we are seeing more and more of this powerful force being used for evil The most popular women's magazines are based in gossip and false stories and words. They are the highest selling magazines, is these gossip magazines in our society today. I mean, that's saying something. If people buy this rubbish, it shows you what, where it's a, it's a thermometer or a barometer of where society is at. If they're popular and, and the highest selling magazines, and they're based on gossip and falsehood and lies, it just shows you where we are at, are at as a society. We need as believers to follow Yeshua as our example, where his words mostly brought healing, deliverance and edification. His words were like honey, sweet to the soul. His words brought life to the hearers. There needs to be a whole lot more of using our little members, our tongues, to speak life. To know when to hold it and shut it and know when to use it to bring peace and life. There are stories also of the power of the tongue and words people speak. And I'm going to share one story with you. I know of a lady personally. I know of a lady in recent times, and she was an unbeliever. She didn't have a faith. And she went to the doctors and wasn't well. And she kept saying things like, that's me. Next, I will get the dreaded C word, as in the word cancer. And within, within months, she died of cancer. You know, and there's multiple stories like that where people don't really understand the power of words. And this literally, she was literally speaking over her own life and what she kept saying to herself come to pass. Words are extremely powerful. Like I said at the outset, they're, they're, it's one of the most powerful forces on earth. This happens more than we know. People actually are actually speaking these things into their lives. So we're going to start, we're going to, this, today we're going to explain some Hebrew words and some Greek words based in words and speaking and, and gossip and things like that. So first of all, the, the first word we're going to look at is the word tongue, because that's what we're talking about. The Hebrew word for tongue is Lashon, Lamad Shin Vav Nun. The tongue as the organ of speech used for good or bad, so it's literally your tongue, the organ in your body. But it's also used idiomatically for thirsty, as their tongue being parched, one who's thirst, it's an idiomatic expression saying that I'm thirsty. My tongue's parched. It's also used in the sense of a speech impediment. Example, stammering or having a heavy tongue. This is what Moses said when Yahweh had an encounter with him at the burning bush. He said, oh, my, my tongue is heavy. I'm not eloquent of speech. 
and it's also used in the meaning of a person's language, their dialect, their tongue. It would be this word, one of the Hebrew words for that is Lashon. It's translated in our Bibles as the tongue, speech, language, and a couple of other things which I thought were interesting was what a wedge. Maybe it's because of the shape of a tongue, maybe like a wedge. A bay. Maybe when you stick your tongue out, it looks like a bay. It also is used in the sense of slanderer, babbler, a flame, as we know, tongues of fire, talkers, and used in the sense of literature. And more literally, it's the wagging of the tongue when someone's talking or slandering. So we're going to look at a couple of examples of Lashon in our scriptures. And the first example is the first occurrence of Lashon in our Bibles, which is Genesis 10.5. And it says, From these the coastland peoples of the Gentiles were separated into their lands, everyone according to his language according to their families, into their nations. So in this verse, the word language is Lashon, according to his Lashon. That's their first occurrence in our Bibles, this is to do with language. Another example is Exodus 4.10. And it says, Then Moses said to Yahweh, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, Neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So in this word, in this one, it's the word tongue. I'm a slow of tongue. This is Moses communicating with Yahweh at the burning bush. And this is one of the probably, this is a very powerful verse and one that we really need to try and understand. And it's Proverbs 18.21 which backs up my statement at the start, which is words is one of the most powerful forces on earth. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the Lashon, power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And that's good and bad, good and bad fruit. Those who love it will eat its fruit in a good and bad way. So in the Greek, the word that's used, that the Greeks have used to translate Lashon into the New Testament is the Greek word glossa. Glossa. And this is where we get our English word glossary. So glossa is the, one of the, new, uh, the Greek words in the New Testament that is directly related to Lashon. So let's have a look at a couple of scripture verses to do with Glosser in our New Testaments. Romans 3.13, it says, Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. This is powerful stuff when it's talking about people speaking and talking. Another example is in Romans 14.11. For it is written... As I live, says Yahweh, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So that word tongue is glossa, or if it was in Hebrew, it would be lashon. And another example is in 1 Peter 3.10. For he who would love life and see good days. Sounds like a proverb to me. He who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue, his glosser, from evil, and his lips from speaking deceit. So if you want to see good days and love life, there's a certain way we need to speak and behave. Refrain your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit.
So there's a terminology that some of us may be known, may be aware of, and it's called Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara is not actually in the Bible, the phrase, which I thought was quite interesting because I didn't know that until a couple of days ago. Lashon Hara is not in the Bible, but Psalm 34.13 is the closest to it. Lashon Hara is the terminology that the rabbis come up with that is found in their Talmudic writings, but it's still scriptural, as we will see. It's based on this psalm and a couple of other scriptures that we'll go through. Lashon Hara, which means Lashon, as we know, is speech, and Ra is evil. So, and ha is the, so it's Lashon the evil. So to put it in English, it means evil, the evil speech, the evil tongue. So Psalm 34, 13 says, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. So this is probably where Peter got his reference from in the scripture verse we read earlier. He was quoting this Psalm most likely. Leviticus 19 verse 16 also says, You shall not go about as a talebearer among your people. You shall not take a stand against the life of your neighbour. I am Yahweh. So this is a direct reference to them and also to us that we shall not be like this among ourselves or among each other. In Deuteronomy 27, 24, it says, Curse is the one who attacks his neighbour secretly, and all the people shall say Amen. I mean, this is just powerful stuff. This is how Israel was supposed to behave. It says Deuteronomy 27, 24, I'll say it again. Curse is the one who attacks his neighbour secretly. That means talking about them behind their backs. And all the people shall say Amen. So these verses are understood by rabbis to be Lashon Hara, derogatory speech about a person. It is a form of harming a person without their knowledge. Lashon Hara differs, though, from defamation. And I found this next bit really interesting. Lashon Hara differs, differs from defamation in that Lashon Hara is truthful speech rather than lies. It is a truthful speech about a person, but it's not necessarily right to speak that truth. So what you're saying about a person might be truth, but it still doesn't give you the right to speak that truth to somebody else. It's also connected, Lashon Hara is another, is directly connected to Za'arat. What's Za'arat? Za'arat is the leprosy that was brought on by slander, gossip, and evil speech. And we find that example with Miriam. Remember when Miriam, uh, what's his name, Moses' brother and Aaron's brother, she spoke out sister. against him, sister, his sister, spoke out against him. That was Lashon Hara. And this leprosy that they got, these white spots on their skin, that wasn't the leprosy that we are known today, where your skin degenerates and falls off. This was an affliction that was brought purely on by Yahweh because of their evil speech and their gossip and their slander. Because Miriam didn't go straight to Moses, she went to Aaron. What she said was may have been right, but she had no right to say it. So another word we need to understand in Hebrew is the word for talebearer. This is the word that we find all through our scriptures in, in, in regards to bad speech, and this is the Hebrew word rakil, rakil, and it means to slander, it's a slanderer, a tale bearer, an informer, gossiping, and its base meaning is to peddle, so it's one that's out there peddling rubbish, peddling misinformation, peddling slander, they are a tale bearer. And some examples of this in our Bibles of Rakil is Leviticus 19 verse 16. And it says, You shall not go out about as a tale bearer among your people. We already read this, Nor shall you stand against the life of your neighbour. I am Yahweh. So this is closely related to Lashon Hara and saying that you should not go out as a tale bearer among your own. 
And in Proverbs 11.13, it says, A tale bearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. We need more of this, where people go to each other in confidence, people go to each other to talk to them, and then one of the most hurtful things can be when that information gets out, especially when you've gone to somebody privately and then they go and reveal they're a tale bearer. They reveal secrets and then the uh, opposite of that is one who is faithful conceals the matter. Another example of this word rakil is in Proverbs 20 verse 19. And it's very similar. He who goes out about as a tale bearer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with one who flatters with the lips. So this is a... This is a a uh, 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 saying of wisdom that don't associate with people that flatter with their lips. The word flatters here is the Hebrew word pathak. Pathak. And it means to be open, to be wide, entice, deceive, and persuade. So we are not to associate with anyone that is like this. Their mouth is wide open and they reveal the secrets. They flatter with their lips for their own gain because they're enticing and deceiving and persuading and will always be for their benefit. So we'll look at the Greek equivalent to the word for a tail bearer. In the Greek, the equivalent word for tail bearer is dolos. And it means to speak deceitfully. And I find this interesting. It means to catch with bait. It's a lure, a snare. Craft and deceit with guile. This is how the, the, the Greeks explain the word doulos. It's interesting that it means to catch with bait. It's the word that they use for a lure. And let's look at some examples in the New Testament of this word. Matthew 26, 4, and it says, And they plotted to take Yeshua by trickery. That word trickery is the word dolos. And they plotted to take him by trickery and kill him. They tried to set snares. They tried to bait him. They tried to trap him. And we also know that they bore false witness against him. In John 1.47, it says, this is in a positive sort of sense. Yeshua saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit, no dolos, no rakil. He wasn't a tale bearer. He was a good, honest, righteous man. Another word we want to look at is the Hebrew word for speech. And that word is safar. Safar means the lip or your lips, edge, speech, the seashore, the bank of a river, and also a border. So your lip, the lip or the edge of something. It's also used as language as spoken from the lips. And we see the connection that the lips are the edge or the border of the mouth. So we can see why it's used as the seashore, because the seashore is the lip or the border of the ocean. The same with the bank of a river. So we talked about earlier in the Torah portion how Pharaoh had a dream and he stood on the bank. That's this word, sepha. He was standing on the bank, he was standing on the edge of the river. It's that exact same word, sepha, sorry. In Genesis 11.7, and it says, Come, let us go down there and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So in this particular verse, this word Safa is actually used twice and it's used in the word language and speech. So this is Yahweh saying this is the, the incident of the Tower of Babel and he says, come let us go down and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. 
Another example is in Leviticus 5.4. Or if a person swears, speaking thoughtlessly with his lips, to do evil or to do good, whatever it is that a man may pronounce by an oath, and he is unaware of it, when he realises it, then he, she, she, he shall be guilty in, the, in any of these matters. So this word lips is that word sefa, whatever that person speaks. In Proverbs 4.24 it says, Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Put away from your, you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips so far, far from you. The Greek word for lip is kelios. Kele, sorry, kelios. Kelios, and it means a lip, speaking of the mouth, the seashore again, and banks of the river. And some New Testament examples of this word kilos is in Matthew 15 8. These people, we read this out in Bible study last week, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's that word kilos, the word lips. Hebrews eleven twelve. Therefore from one man and him as good as dead was born as many as the stars of the sky and multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. So that's that same, that seashore is that same word. Hebrews 13 verse 15, it says, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So we see again, the fruit of our lips, what we say, what we speak, should be giving thanks to him. Another Hebrew word for speaking is the bar. This is probably the most common use of the word for speaking, is the word the bar. It is a verb. So it is an action of speaking. It is the action of speaking. It's the action of talking. And it is everywhere in our Bibles. When I looked it up, I think there was over 2,000 references to this word, the bar. And an example is, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, that word spoke is the word, the bar. So it's the action of speaking. It's the actual verb. The Greek word for the bar is laleo, laleo, and it means to utter a voice, emit a sound, to speak, to use words in order to declare one's mind and to disclose one's thoughts. So that's a very similar way of the word dabar in the Old Testament, very similar to the New Testament. And some examples of laleo in the New Testament is in Matthew twelve thirty four. And it says, broader vipers, he's speaking to religious people, broader vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that this little thing, this tongue is moved by what's inside us. It's often said that when you meet somebody, you can work out who they are within the first 10 minutes because of what they speak. You know what's in their hearts because of this verse. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. James 1.19, it says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Wow, I need some of that. Let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. It's been said that's why we have two ears and one mouth. So we spend double the time of listening than speaking. So to wrap this up, we have learned today some words that are behind language, speaking, and the attitude behind how we speak. We are starting to see by some of these scriptures the power that is associated with what we say. 
We create by the words we say, the environment around us. We create our lives by what we say. Another key is to not let words, this is a big one, another key is to not let words that are spoken define you. Not to let words that are spoken define who you are. This is a very hard thing to do as we are all affected by what we hear, whether that is directly to us or by a third party. I mean, let's face it, it's not easy hearing criticism about you. We all have this happen from time to time. When this happens, we have a choice. We either go to the person directly, if possible, especially as believers and sort it out, or we do nothing. We have to be ever mindful. This is another big key. We have to be ever mindful of not being that third party. Because if you are that third party, you're a tail bearer. You're revealing secrets. So we have to be ever mindful of not being that th third party in the first place. For many times, it's the third party that gives the bad speech life and causes it to grow. That's what's called gossip and, and tail bearing. This is one of the ways Satan rob, kill and destroys, especially among the believers. It's right outside out, out in the world, it's rife, it's absolutely everywhere. But it should not be named among us as believers. And again, I'm not accusing anyone, I'm, I'm speaking to me as much as anyone else. Because Yahweh's called us to live a certain way. Yahweh has called us to behave a certain way. And trust me, this stuff is rife among churches. This stuff is rife among the believers. No matter what denomination you go to, no matter what church is like, the, the names over the front door, this stuff is rife and it's only going to get worse. And Yahweh has called us to be holy for he is holy. He has called us to be a set apart people. How do we do that? We do that through one of the ways is our speech. And the way we speak to one another, the way we talk to one another, and not only not, not and it's not just to one another, it's to others. It's to the way we communicate to those that are around us, our families, our world, the world that we live in. And this can be a very hard thing to do. But it's something that we need to do. It's something that we're called to do because we're called to be set apart. And we said earlier that it says that they shall know you because of your love for one another. They shall know you because you love one another. Now, love doesn't mean you don't have spats and disputes. Love means that you correct spats and disputes in a godly manner. That's what love is. That's what this ahav is that we talk about, is to love one another, to get over these things. I'm not saying this is, this is going on, but when it does, this is what we should do because Satan wants to come in and divide. That's his main thing is divide because a house divided cannot stand. And if he can bring a division within the house, that's his goal. He wants to rob, kill and destroy. So this is what we need to be like. We need to be the one with the hand up. We need to stop the third party. We need to stop it ourselves and be a witness and a testimony to Yahweh. So next week we're going to go further with this because we'll see throughout the scriptures that the words are the initiation and the beginning of everything in our Bibles. And we'll see how, how powerful and how effective that is, both positively and negatively. But this week was all about just laying a foundation, understanding some of these terminologies in our Bibles, understanding the, what's behind them in the, in the Hebrew. And we've seen a taste today of who we are, who we should be and who we shouldn't be. So on that note, we'll just close in prayer. And let's speak words of life. Yahweh, I thank you for your word again. And your word is life. As David said over and over and over again in Psalms 119, your word is like sweet as honey. And Father, we pray that your spirit would continually help us in this area. For Father, we all fall short. Father, forgive us where we have fallen into these areas. Forgive us when we've revealed secrets. Forgive us when we've told things that we shouldn't have. Father, forgive us. 
Father, for your word says that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. And Father, we have all sinned in this area. Father, we have all fallen short. Father, I pray that we would be a people that speak words of life in our relationships, in our marriages. Father, in our relationships with each other. Father, I pray that we would be a people that would speak words of life that would edify, that would lift up, that would encourage. Father, I pray that we would be like that. And Father, help us when we fall short, when we struggle. Father, help us to resist that. For your word says, if we submit to you and resist the devil, he must flee. And Father, I pray when these issues and these circumstances come up that you would remind us by your Holy Spirit to behave a different way. Father, help us to be a people that love one another. For your name's sake. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you for watching. We pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you. For more information, please go to www.ancientfoundationbiblefellowship.com. Shalom.